Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in for our New Year episode of the Stylogram Podcast with me, Malika Singhania. Because this time of the year is special, we thought we must get someone who will suit the occasion. Please join me in welcoming Chaya Momaya, a lady who wears many hats. She is not only respected and recognized in caviar circles, but has also launched many luxury brands over the years. Recently, she has even become a life coach. Let's talk to her about her exciting journey and all that it has taught her. Hi Chaya, thank you so much for coming in here. Thank you, Malika, for having me. It's just a pleasure being here. Same here. Absolutely. So, Chaya, let's get started. Tell us yeah. uh, where you were raised and, you know, your journey to where you've come now. It's okay, I come from Burma. Story. I okay. come from Burma. Uh, I mean, you know, my, my grandfather used to have shipping yards and rice mills in Burma. Okay. So, I've been raised for the first five years in Burma. And then, of course, I've always been a Mumbai girl. Okay. Lived in Mumbai all my life and I've been raised absolutely in Mumbai. Okay. And just for a small stint, I went off to Gwalior, Sindhya Girls School for a, for a couple of years to do my education. Other than that, just it's been Mumbai. Okay. So when did you get into this whole luxury space? And, you know, I know that you're, you're doing, you wear so many hats, you know, you're a, a consultant, you're an image consultant. I think you're a luxury consultant. You've helped launch brands. You have a jewelry line and, you know, lots more stuff. So how did you get into the space? Because I'm sure back in the day when you decided, I did too. It was a very niche uh, space. Yeah, Malika, like I told you earlier, my grandfather, because he was in a shipping yard and in the rice mills, you know, he always connected with the diplomats okay. from uh, international diplomats around him. So I've grown up in that atmosphere, you know, where always there has been a certain kind of etiquette, the kind of food the waiters laid out. So I've grown up with that kind of atmosphere so eventually when I came into Mumbai I finished off my college I wanted to work uh, becoming from a typical business kachi family they never expected the woman of the house or the girl of the house to go out and work and I always had a chuspa in me that I have to do something of my own okay. so my father gave me the liberty of saying whatever you want to do, do do from home so my mom and I came up with this idea of doing some Ayurvedic products she's very good with Ayurvedic okay. products as of aesthetic product not consumption okay so we started making this face packs and mm. I was in the mid year of my college and I already built up a client list of 60 uh, 600 people okay. really yeah and it was because trust base first and you could see instant results in the in the on the skin yeah and I did have a few film stars who are now film stars. That time they were just my friends and they were getting into movies and they saw the results and they kept coming back for more. And at one time there was Rajmata Gayatri Devi who was also my client. Amazing. Because she believed in pure Ayurvedic product and she said we used to do back that at uh, in our in our in our royal days and now it's fantastic that somebody like that is doing and then I moved on to hair oil but now how did I get into this was when I started making the Ayurvedic product my one rule was that I have to meet the client myself I, I felt I was a doctor and I was responsible if I'm giving out something the person has to meet me and I have to understand what the concerns are okay so like so forth I built up the client list and one of the ladies who came to me said that you know I need this for my daughter I said I will not give it to you till I see your daughter and she loved the way I spoke the way I carried myself and so forth so the girl comes in over here and she loved the way I had put the whole thing together my probably the way I was so enthusiastic about my work and I was so committed to it She's saying, will you groom my daughter? I want her to be like you because she's not married. I said, no, I, I don't know how, how to do that. He's saying, I give you a sum of 350 rupees. <laughs> and I said, love it. Wow, when was this? What year was that, this? That was in 1980. Wow, back okay. in the day. Yeah, so 1980, I was still in mid-college. And um, I'll give you 350 rupees. I said, wow, that's a big sum in for one or two hours of uh, teaching. I did it. And so happened, luck would have had it. She got mad because the boy loved the way she presented herself. Oh, fabulous. And then the entire lot of cousins came to me. And I got into grooming. And then I got married. 
there was a lull for about 5 years because I was raising my child right. I didn't want to do anything else and then we opened this nightclub called Fashion Bistro which was very big covered by the Time magazine to all the international magazines oh, really? covered the nightclub okay and um to cut the long story short you know I started using La Prairie products I used to buy them from Switzerland and when they launched over here in India they launched in in a nightclub and with a um, lot of models and all that and obviously the business didn't pick up because it's a expensive product and not everybody can afford to buy it yeah. so i told them this is not the way to do it and it ended there they got my name from switzerland from one of the store i used to buy that there are two or three people in india who buy it why don't you approach her how to do it <laughs> because she knows how to she knows what the la prairie products are so i said they, they approached me i said i'm not going to do it the way you do yeah so i had a small lunch at the princess room at the taj palace because the princess room being it used to be a diwan and a conversational room for all the prince and princesses used to meet in the evening okay and i said that's the best place because this is the product is so royal and only people who can afford it will be there and these are my friends who can afford it but they have no idea about la prairie right so i did a lunch with all salads soups you know it you have to feel fresh to be Goodness, able to basically buy. everything good yeah. yeah and i did it by the seaside because one of the product contain real pearls and diamonds de abrasion it was a de abrasion um uh, tube uh some cream and that contained this i said it has to be near the sea so you know because the connection was so good and then la prairie rolled out very well though it was a it was a slow process but it turned out well so, so that's how I'm you never, kind of got into image consulting and into launching yeah, luxury brands and then i guess after they saw the success of that a lot of brands kind of came in and yeah, asked you to launch them so true. is that what you do you like you know strategize for them and kind of decide how you want true. to give the first look of the product yeah you got it bang on yeah because a lot of people think i only host evenings which yeah. is not true it's the whole strategy evening. behind it yes. the guest listing is very important guest list happens only if the strategy is right right because nobody's got the time to waste today yeah but till you don't understand it and if you've not used it you will not know where it takes you like i when i launched the hastens okay. i mean i've launched over 200 international products right. but hastens why it comes to my mind so easily because it's a 50 lakh rupee bed okay okay and you know in a land of mattresses where you still see people coming and trying to separate your uh, cottons in the mattress and it's a lumpy mattress and all you still have to s- imagine somebody buying a 50 lakh rupee bed yeah that's crazy but you have to understand that temperature drops by 2 degrees it's made of pure horses hair and it comes from here and your and one third of your life is you spend on your bed right. and once you relaxed you can work better so when the story went out in a month they sold four beds oh wow yeah, all so, because of you that's amazing uh, see it's i would not attribute that to me yeah it's uh, like a but cohesive i understood thing, but yeah y- because you they, propelled uh, it yeah like i actually educated people i like to educate people right. and when they understand the logic behind it yeah so that makes it easier Yeah. And by now everybody knows I don't work on commission right. ever. However good the product is for me it is a fees I never work on a commission so people trust you even more. Yeah. So they know what you're saying is because you genuinely I believe genuinely in the product. I genuinely believe and I genuinely like to uh, talk about it. And you uh, epitomize that in your life as well the whole luxury aspect. Correct. Do you think image consulting has been uh, difficult for the common person because I feel like you know we're still at a very nascent stage I think um tell us something about the Indian consumer I feel like a lot of times people don't know what to wear but uh, they don't want to accept that they don't know what to wear do you feel the same I thing i disagree because everybody is aware look at our culture that we go back we have a outfit for every occasion why do we do that obviously you're conscious about your image yeah. today even when there are a girl and a boy meeting we always look at the family what is the family like but at the same time i feel that you know indian specifically like you know people who can afford it they really just run behind trends and and the latest designer a lot of times i feel they don't know what works for their that body type a, and not see that is the aesthetic part of it malika you're completely right about that yeah that's the aesthetic part of it you know because they think that this designer is good yeah so even if they make make you luxury tents yeah. and they and they and they charge you a de- uh, a bomb for yeah. it people think oh because it's a known designer let's buy it but what people don't realize first of all when you're paying such a heavy price 
why can't a des- that's why you're going to a designer that the designer has to design an outfit for you, you. yeah that's and, where you come in yeah and each uh, each designer carries their own aesthetics right like a robert cavalli will work for a more flamboyant evening yeah though it's a very big brand but a giorgio armani is fabulous f- to bring glamour to your day life yeah. when you're going to work yeah if you can afford it but so each brand carries their own image i think also like with indian designers right like a sabesachi like typically the wedding hangers are so heavy but if you're very petite and short it might not be the right thing for you to wear you could wear like something a little bit more feminine and lightweight and stuff so it's not just about chasing the latest brand the latest Correct. thing that's out there but where is the choice over here you think every, so yeah because every designer is making heavy stuff just yeah. because something is in trend they and and also no, but it's I a herd feel, mentality like now like we have an anushri reddy who does like fabulous floral printed lehengas and you know does lightweight kind of stuff i think that can be feminine and because the mindset i tell you malika is that if i paid so much it has to be heavy yeah people so don't, they, understand they don't understand that the cut is also important very important so if if i paid say 1 lakh for an outfit it should be so embellished that it should look like a 1 yeah, lakh outfit i totally people agree. forget that this is my body type and this is how i have to carry it's so funny that you said it because whenever i wear a outfit from a rohit bal or a raghavendra rathod people say my god how do you dress different because i know what i'm going to wear and i know what works for me and i have to look at ease i do not need to copy somebody else and that's how you stand out from the rest but people are not ready to take that challenge they yeah. think that if one bride looks like this i have to look like that so you must be having experiences like this all the time and all you must be dealing with families like you know with a bride it's always like her mother her mother in law her sister her bua mm. how do you then deal with all these dynamics i mean give us an experience of how you've been able to kind of curate the trousseau of a bride like dealing with them. all these dynamics in play yeah like i tell them i'll give them a logical reason say when you buy a rohit bal you paid x amount of money what happens is this outfit is going to last you for 16 years because it's a weave Yeah and when you put your embellishments into a weave it's definitely going to last you for long but when you buy an another ex designer the fabric is so flimsy by the end of the season by by end of the season there is the fabric's not going to last you at all so you decide what you want yeah. and do you want your daughter because i i put a lot of questions in front of them and finally they they realize oh my god but that's only a niche crowd whoever comes to me yeah but other than that largely like you said malika that people do not know they think that it has to be so embellished that it should look worth 1 lakh yeah it should not they forget their own comfort so do you give them an option then like for example if you took on a client and uh, she did not want to follow your instruction and she mm. still wanted to dress that way but then at the end of the day the, your name would come in her in then, curating then, her look so then would you give her the option or would you just put your foot down and say no you should not no wear but that. people come to me knowing very well that it's they they're coming to an expert to take an advice right so they are very open about it i've never had a problem till now because i've always been very logical with people okay so when you bring logic into them they realize a the difference they say okay there was one client of mine who was going to meet melinda gates okay okay and she came to me she saying should i wear this very heavy or over the top i said no she already knows indian clothes yeah and the whole lot of indians are going to mean a lot of people will be wearing salwar kameez but wear a outfit which is a conversation let melinda gets ask you wow what is this weave yeah. what part of india does it come from and that did it to her so she stood out from the rest of the crowd because melinda to that extra 2 minutes to ask her where is this i that's mean that's so true you, you know and it doesn't have to be a designer name and it was it, a designer of course yeah. but asked her where is this outfit from what is his work why is his jacket is so royal yeah so it and and also it connected with her that she could wear it in one of the balls or one of the western thing dinners that she could go for yeah. so i told her wear a wear a fusion don't okay. wear a typical indian because that's not going to interest her yeah. because she knows she never going to wear a typical indian outfit and go anywhere but to catch somebody's attention you have to identify with them right okay and you know what would you give what advice would you give to a bride who's you know shopping what maybe not even with a very extravagant budget what are the three things that you would tell her to invest in that you should be able to wear is a treasure is one time once in a lifetime 
of course i mean it's true, it's now we are in another century where i don't say it's a once in a lifetime but whatever it is yeah. it's a important day for you <laughs> you know so it's a important day for you yeah. so make sure that you should be able to repeat your outfit yeah. and make it so versatile that you know when you take out the one of the one of the important parts of the outfit you would be able to wear it in some yeah, other way true, yeah. so mix and match so automatically it's a memory for you that is a your bridal outfit and it's usable Second also thing, you, you, it's, it has to be versatile for you to reuse it because you know you could be the most richest man in india but you you buy your outfit so much passion yeah why would you just wear it once and dump it right. you know when you look in the mirror you see your profile you see how much your tummy is coming out or whether any of your fat is being shown or how is it complementing you in 10 different ways so when you've t- taken so long why yeah. would you want to dump the outfit and not wear it again yeah so make sure make it versatile change the dupatta change your blouse and make the make sure that on the same skirt you can wear another very casual top and wear it for somebody else's party right. or accessorize it so differently that there's a more repeat value to it right. but make it look different every time okay so that's one thing i always tell them okay and talk about accessories i know you've done a lot of stuff with jewelry tell us about that okay first i always think jewelry need not be kept in a locker okay because they are forever diamonds are forever the time you buy a piece of jewelry unless you are the bride but again being a bride i always say get into versatile jewelry where you take out two or three chains and make them lighter yeah. and add a pendant and wear it for something else but don't put it in the locker thinking i'll wear it for a particular occasion because you know it's it's very sad that you spend so much money to put it back in the locker yeah first and the foremost don't get into locker jewelry second thing jewelry is a memory so always buy a jewelry which you'll be able to repeat it on different outfits don't get so traditional where you can only wear it on traditional outfits of course there are some of our jadaws and jartas which work beautifully with indian outfits that's fine and but other than that and they work beautifully with gowns and stuff also sometimes it depends it depends on it's, the gown it's like yeah. it's like um, you know i always feel that you know when you when you wear something it has to be done properly You know, unless if I'm wearing a Raghavendra gown, then a jada is going to work very well. But if yeah. I'm going to wear uh, George's chakra, I don't know the jada will go very well. But like even like, a Gaurav Gupta, sometimes it could look yeah, great. Yeah, Indian. With. Yeah, yeah, what I meant, sorry, like a Indian designer, yeah. a gown. Who understands Indian sensibility? Because they will still have a little aesthetic coming, uh, you know, pertaining to uh, right. in uh, in in you know, they'll still have Indian aesthetics. Right. But when it comes to say a Gucci or a George's chakra, no, no, of course not. You know, That's an then out to and out blend, Western brand. Yeah. So you. you are actually forcing yourself to wear something which is not doesn't belong there yeah so if it's a gown made by indian designer of course jar, jartar jada work very well but you do not need to over embellish yourself just one big neck piece or just yeah. one pair of earrings or one big um, heart full will work fabulously right so uh, when uh, coming back to my question your question about jewelry is i said i have to do something and i love jewelry when it is when it can be worn every every day yeah so i just love the brand varuna dijani because i like the way she can actually convert one piece into six different ways okay so that's how i invested in that product okay nice and yeah. what is your stint with the uh, home i know you do like you make people's homes as well no i what i do i i've now st- uh, doing homes which have a conversation okay it's like you know of recent when i was making my home i thought that you know carpets first of all i'm spending a bomb on carpets and also maintaining a carpet yeah. in in this industry because you know what is happening the none of the uh, laundries are that well versed in carpet cleaning unless you have somebody really really specializing in it right and and also i'm feeling with lot of dust is affecting my breathing and my allergies and all that so i came up with this whole pure real gem flown gem stone flooring oh yeah. okay so you know it's forever yeah you and when people walk in and saying oh my god that's an amethyst that's a jade that's How a beautiful yeah so you know and it and these real gem stones earthy gem stone have so much story to tell yeah of course and they come from our earth yeah it's so earthy and once and for all and so easy to maintain so easy to clean and yet it has a royal touch about it right. and it can liven up any any room okay so you like, like pretty yeah. much give like that one like oomph to yes. a house 
yeah and then like i've started with silver real silver ceilings yeah just a small part of it when it is under a chandelier when you put the silver ceiling on it it just gives a wow effect fabulous so amazing so, yeah, so we have this french designer who gives a little more western look to the silver right and if you have a little more um a more royal home then you can even make a silver which and our mathura ka kaam is so beautiful okay wow so you know and it and you know when you do the carving the entire ceiling comes alive yeah wow i mean you're just such a super career woman we are learning so much sitting over it here from you it has to be you. lifestyle and i think everything has to be a conversation malika even yeah. when you're talking food yeah I connect with a lot of chefs, uh, Michelin star chefs all over the world. Before I go in, I'm a pure pure vegetarian, but I make sure I make conversation with them, and they love challenges. Right. So I challenge them to make something very different. Yeah, I think you just embody it in every aspect yeah, of your life. Yeah, it has to be so a conversation. It's easy for you to lend it to any space in your life. Yeah. On that note, let's take our first break, and we'll come back and talk a lot more about all sure. of this. It was rated Goregaon's most intelligent podcast. It was the best new podcast of the day when it was launched. And now, the irreverent brand of attempted humor and botched education is coming your way. You have many burning questions. So what is the Brexit? What do mathematicians do, man? I mean, introducing Simplified, a weekly podcast that deconstructs issues around you such as what on earth is Bitcoin? So Bitcoin is just an other currency like the rupee or dollar. The difference here is it's a virtual currency. Do resolutions in cameras really matter? They think that just because a number is higher what they're getting is actually more. And encryption. So encryption okay it's a process of encoding messages in such a fashion that only the intended recipient sees it in its intended format. Hosted by Narendra Shanoi, a very wise man who can't stop making PG Woodhouse references, and Deepak Gopalakrishnan, who calls himself Chuck, a madman who can't stop making poor jokes. Narendra, what do you call a forest where you find all the latest news? Uh oh, I don't have a good feeling about a that. A topical rainforest. Follow Chuck and Arain as they scour Google and read Wikipedia for you and condense it into language you can understand. Simplify. helping you up your smarter to an audience that knows no different and we're back with chaya mumaya she's already given us so many tips and tricks but we're going to find out some more um so let's get started chaya um on a funnier note give us a fashion faux pas that you've either seen recently or that you've made sometime in your past <laughs> I have made a lot of fashion for past. Really? Yeah, sometimes you know I've actually trusted a designer yeah. and I thought they've done a good job on me till I see it in the papers saying oh my god <laughs> what was Chaya Mumaya wearing but you know, it's and so what was she thinking wearing a dhoti with a uh, a jacket but you know? it's so great of you to say that because <laughs> you know it kind of makes you feel like you're human and even you can but make you mistakes. But you have yeah but that or I would be god no yeah. I'm not. So yeah. and the other fashion for pies when people forget so you forget think dhoti with jackets are, are strict no it depends see it didn't work for me i'm okay. sure it would have worked with a lot of people i don't have a mannequin figure right so when something hangs on you anything looks good yeah. but i do have uh, flesh on me so there are times when i can't really carry that off i mean today you don't you look see. like you've got flesh on you <laughs> obviously dressed you're very, perfectly you're, you're very kind no. i've learned now <laughs> <laughs> to camouflage it well okay but other than that you know I think I have to bring my own aesthetics what I'm comfortable with. So even if it even if it people think I'm wearing monochromatic colors too often but that's me. Yeah. I don't care because that's my style and people have to know me for my style. Right. I don't want to walk around like a look book. Yeah. You know because I don't say oh that's a Dolce Gabbana walking to you or that's a Gucci lady walking to you. Yeah. But it has to be that's Chaya Mumaya that's most important for me. Yeah. Okay? Fashion faux pas among the ladies I've seen when they pass 40 45 First of all they don't really have the thinnest of mannequin bodies that's fine you know if everybody had a mannequin body the world would be very boring yeah so please go out i'm not telling you to go be, everyone has to be thin like a stick and then wear a western outfit by all means wear what you have to but make sure that it's no so tight that it's the flesh starts oozing out yeah and you start looking like a hamburger Yeah. And then over the top accessories, over the top outfit, over the top makeup. They think that's making them look younger, but no. I always say when you're wearing 10 things, take out 8 things. Really? And wear the two things. Okay. And that will make you look lot more chicer, and more younger, more youthful if that's the target you're looking at. Right. Yeah. And what is going to make you look the best is a good hair. 
yeah not over the top blow dried with tons of spray into your hair where, where when you move even the hair doesn't move along <laughs> with you you know and then and the tons of it makeup it looks like a wig yeah it it looks like a wig and also when the nails are too bad you know too uh, heavily done yeah. keep it normal keep it natural the more naturally look the more youthful you're going to look and poised i yeah. guess and yeah always and also yeah. never go over the top with accessories just that one pair of solitaires or one pair of earring with one bracelet is going to take you a long way right right just like you are today no, no. <laughs> so don't over embellish in any form yeah yeah and any trends that you're like really big on right now that you're loving i love all the trends if it works for you it's yours that's why there are fashion forecasters who yeah. come out with a trend but you know one thing very few people can carry off frills if frills are in make sure that you don't go all out getting frilled up Do because you think uh, at frills are tough in fact and on the contrary i always thought it was very easy to carry frills but uh, see also are you going to wear uniform all your life no yeah you know you have to start looking a lot more matured experience that a difference it's not about being young or old it also depends on your body type yeah and also it depends on see i don't come out like a frill person because i'm not very feminine yeah so i would still cut down on a frill with just little trimming somewhere but not very pretty not over the top frills yeah. so i think you know when you minimize it 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 looks far more better on to you right then get, going all out and getting frilled all over yeah so so and so forth i think the best thing what works classically for the day wear is good pair of jeans and a good top Right. You can never go wrong and make you look yeah make you look youthful all your life. Yeah. And you look stylish in that always. And you look stylish Everyone looks stylish, stylish in that. Yeah. What do you think of this really deep uh, lipstick that's now really in, you know, that very deep brown and the deep burgundy. I mean, I have a few mixed feelings about it. See, there's there is reason to take it uh these colors come out to take out the boredom out of your life but what people don't understand when you say if you do a very dark lipstick minimize your face makeup completely so let the lips stand out here you still do your eyes you yeah. still do your eyebrows you still do your hair and then you whether lips is not going to yeah, work for you yeah, yeah. so you know and also i think your outfit also has to be a little minimalistic minimalistic you know? fully because that red color pops out yeah. and also what we forget that all these colors come out in western countries they have the blue white tone yeah we have the yellow white tone yeah so as much as there is a girl who's very fair doesn't have that blue tone to be able to carry that off unless you put the whole look together right people forget it is just not that one thing yeah it's not the color it's the hair the makeup like when i see kangana ranawat she puts it all so beautifully together yeah she knows that if she is wearing a bright red lipstick she will minimize on her hair her hair will be done in a particular manner her skin will be absolutely fresh and people when they start identifying with her but look at yourself first do you really look like that yeah and i think you have to take out that one element that you like but then you can't have all the other elements El- from elements everyone shouting. else as well nothing should be shouting yeah, exactly it, just let that one thing pop up yeah you know i mean you've thing. already given us so many grooming tri- uh, tips but i was going to ask you give us a few more like give us a couple more grooming tips for young girls you know easy things that people forget Like I mean, you what? just told me about the whole hair thing which is so important like see young let them be the way they are yeah. because they have to grow right they have to mature they have to experience yeah. don't worry about you know even at the when when you when you pass 40 never worry about your wrinkles you know why okay. it's an experience which you added on your face right. when people tell you you look young i don't believe it it's not about looking young it's about being youthful yeah. if you tell me to climb 50 floor 15 floors at a stretch i'm happy to do it because that's making me youthful right so i mean you may have done all the works on your face and you can't climb three floors and you start panting that's not done like you said you have to that's embody it right whatever yeah. you endorse you have to embody yeah you have to embody and also you don't try so hard it's okay you know that little wrinkle is only adding the flavor on your face right it's 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 your energy which is going to be let out yeah you know today when you see mr amitabh bachchan at 70 odd years he is so rocking he does all the type of movies his voice modulation is perfect in a perfect shape i don't have to say oh my what is he saying let him repeat it yeah and he has got so much of energy i'm not even looking that he's 70 plus yeah. i'm not even going that way right so 
carry yourself like that with elegance it's very important yeah. bring that youth into you bring that vigor into you and bring that chut spine to you which is most important right and you know i mean before we start the interview we had this long discussion about blow dries and i thought there were some very interesting points can you sure. repeat a little bit of that because i meet people all the time who tell me that they don't need a blow dry and obviously you have contrary beliefs to that uh, it's like you know you you washed your outfit and say okay i'm not going to iron it yeah so <laughs> the answer comes there yeah or i'm not going to steam it you have to steam your garments so you think everyone needs to have a I, blow dry at a certain point if it depends on where you're presenting yourself no like I'm not, I'm publicly not you if you're you going to out go and present to a college in a school just let your hair be no, let no, it like go. i'm talking yeah. about like if you're going to a party you must get a blow dry i point. think it's very important to look neater yeah you know it depends on how you do it yeah and the right product is very important for your hair Right, and you know we were discussing together that I think a blow dry can just change your look, and even it's if you've got glory, right? That's what you said. A skin can be restructured, your body can be restructured. You can change your clothes, you can change your makeup, but once you've lost your hair, nothing ever comes back. Yeah, the only thing which will come back to you is a weave <laughs> in your hair. So are you ready for that? <laughs> so a bad option so, for people who've lost their hair. No, if they've lost, but look after it yeah. when you can. Yeah, so you don't need to go. To what that are some term. ways of looking after it? right invest in i always tell people forget your jewelry forget your clothes yeah you have to invest in your skin and hair but yeah. that is going to be a longevity is going to take you a long way and that is going to make you look youthful all your life right so how would you take care of Oh hey. Invest in the best. See, I can't really talk about brands right now no, because it's not, not brands, right. But yeah, any because each one has a priority. Yeah. So, first and the foremost, when you want the plant to look healthy, what is that what you put? Water? Yeah. You feed it well. So the same thing feed your body well. Automatically, your hair is going to be lustrous. Your speech modulation is going to be absolutely perfect. That gives away a lot about you. Yeah. Your skin is going to be dot everybody is running to do exercises but what they forget the largest organ of your body is your skin if you keep that taut you're going to look youthful yeah that's true you know imagine a sagging skin and a fit body yeah what are you talking about yeah that's so true you don't want the skin to sag yeah. you don't want to have bumps on your skin you don't want to have abrasions on your skin you need to look Wow when people look at you right i think we need to take notes and like there's so many tips that you're giving us we're going to yeah, like forget them so. but uh, thank you for it has to be that. logical that's yeah. all and now let's jump into our rapid fire round yeah, are sure. you ready to yeah. quickly answer our questions okay uh one advice to a bride always respect the family that you're going into okay. very important because that's a longe- longevity to your marriage that's a lovely advice luxury is so simple we complicate it one thing you could change about the fashion industry don't push trends on people who don't deserve it beauty or who brains? don't know it sorry okay beauty or brains beauty or brains any time brains with the brains yeah. will always look beautiful but it will be able to beauty? no because it will hold your conversation no yeah beauty you've seen somebody one day you say wow the next day the only thing which is going to sustain a relationship is a brains yeah and that's i always look at the long term right one trend that should go away <laughs> <laughs> you have too many uh, yeah. botox <laughs> okay your style icon my style icon um actually my god i'm really thinking you want to come back to it uh my style icon you know it's it may sound very cliche but i love of course rajmata of jaipur who's no more yeah. with us she had a style of her own and the queen of jordan rania yeah though she was a model she has been adapted herself so beautifully as the royal that you can't make other difference wow and she dresses according to the uh the program that she's going for or whatever the event that she is right Best dressed in Bombay? No one. No one. Not one. Not one. Really? Kangana, if you call Kangana, if she is a Sonam normal. Not Sonam Kapoor. She is like a lookbook. Sorry. Yeah. Hmm. She Not po- individual no. style. See, Sonam Kapoor portrays a brand. I mean, when you put a brand together, the, yeah. To me, I think a person who has a style of their own is. important for me i'm not saying sonam is bad no, no, she does not. her job yeah. very well and yeah. she looks fantastic yeah. with the covers and the brands do very well through her yeah but when it comes to the most stylish person no one 
You I, want to give that I mean, to I have yet to meet somebody who's got that. Yeah, but there are, though it may sound very, uh, you know, I don't know how many people would know them. There is uh, this 70 year old Saryu Daftari and Sharayu Do- Doshi. They are fabulous. You know, they still wear their gajra, they're 70 plus, oh, okay. and they still wear their weaves beautifully. Okay. But that is one thing. Other than that, I think people like to talk more on the brands on their body than creating their own style. Right. Yeah, I agree. Most beautiful house that you've seen? My own home. Yeah. <laughs> you know why not? Because uh, it's beautiful. Because I'm very comfortable there. Yeah. Your take on the larger body types? I think live as far as you're fit. It's absolutely fine. You should not get up, get out of bed saying, oh my God, I wish I can sleep a little longer. Yeah. The time you feel that, then... Any body type is wrong. Yeah, yeah. Worst dressed in Bollywood? I really... See, don't go through Bollywood because they have to dress according to the audience, what likes them. Right. I may not agree with somebody, but if it works for the audience, it's fantastic. Okay. I don't think there's anybody worse dressed. Worst. They also all yeah. have stylists of their own. So and I think I, quite similar think, at some level. I think the stylist must be wrong <laughs> more than the... Yeah. <laughs> Happiness is? A smile. To, to see a smile... On my dear ones every single morning. Okay. Fame or money? Any day fame because automatically fame brings you a lot of money. Yeah. One thing no one knows about you. I'm like an open book. Yeah. Everybody knows everything about me. Wow. They, Maybe uh, that's yeah. what they don't know that you're an open book. Yeah, no, everybody knows and they say that to me. But nobody knows my husband and they call him a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> you never see him. <laughs> That's funny. If you were to throw a party, what theme would it be? Always classic, elegant, Audrey Hepburn, um, conversation. You know, because I always feel, why do you have a party to meet people, to have conversation? But when you make too many people, do too much loud music, I lose out all. Right. So I, I love to have something where I can make conversation yeah, yeah. With, because I love people. Yeah. Your prized possession? A pashmina shawl given by my son's first salary. Oh, how nice. Yeah. Oh, that's precious. If you had to carry three things on an island, what would they be? Of course, my mobile. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really work over there. <laughs> but love, but, but I hope I'm never marooned there. Lots of water to drink because I can't drink the yeah, salt that's water. That's an intelligent answer. Yeah. And so maybe that'll, that'll keep me going. Photographs Sorry? of loved ones. No, but what if, I mean, when you're lost, you're lost. You can't carry yeah, all that. Yeah. So, water is one thing is always there with <laughs> sunscreen, you. Sunscreen, you, sunscreen. Yeah, but you don't, you don't, you don't really carry uh, these things along with you when you're marooned yeah. on an island. Yeah, that's true. But, but water is something which can pick up from which anywhere and carry. Up. Yeah. And lots of fruits. <laughs> <laughs> that you'll find in the island, hopefully. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and lastly, what makes you smile? Everyone. I, you know, there are, uh, what makes me smile is when I see my husband and my son, I can leave the world just to be with them. However important the meeting is, if they are, if they have given me time, that brings a smile. The day I hear my son is saying, mom, I have time for you today or let's go out for dinner. Oh, the, the, my, my smile only gets wider. Oh, you know, I think what's been amazing with this uh, chat with you is that, you know, you embody luxury and you're all about luxury and you look so glamorous. But I mean, what's really come through is that you're all about family and love and it's happiness. Human, no? Luxury and, is uh, one part. Yeah, but that's fabulous. And that's been really enriching for me. Thank you so much for talking to us and, you know, wish you lots of success and happiness and hope to see you around soon. Malika, honestly, I'll tell you, it was wonderful talking to you too. Thank you. Because you had a fabulous, very infectious smile, uh-huh. and and uh-huh. I and I love the way you adapt things so fast. You just interviewed an actor, and yeah. now there is somebody who comes from a very normal background. No, uh, no, you're far from no, normal. No, <laughs> no normal background, and you've been able to bring the same chutzpah into the conversation. No, no, no. it was all you, and thank you no, so no, much no, for that. Us. Lovely. Thank you. thank you so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next week yet again for our new episode. In the meanwhile, you can stay in touch with us on Facebook at Stylogram Official and on Instagram at Stylogram underscore official. You can also download our episodes from iTunes and SoundCloud. See you soon.
Our podcasts bring all the boys to the yard and damn right, they're better than yours. But you don't need to stand outside in the yard. Just follow IVM Podcasts on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. We might be on Tinder too. Just go ahead and swipe right.